What up, people? Here we come again. I'm going to talk to y'all about this little transmission oil cooler, right? And uh, it's on a 2004 Nissan Quest that I'm fits to show you in a minute. All right, so we got the seal in the back, right, for the oil cooler. And then you got your two lines coming in it. And then you got your O-ring that sits right up in here, too. Now, this is the O-ring that was in it. And I was able to find one to match up to it. And I kind of like this new one because the new one's a little thicker. And it fits in there a little bit better, as you can see. So that's a little bit thicker, but not too thick. And it fits in there real nice. Now, I don't know how well this camera is going to show it, but this one had an area that was a little flattened out camera doesn't really do it justice but it was a little flattened out over there now i'm gonna show you where it goes it's real simple it sits right there bow just like that and then you get this bolt over here that i have sitting under here Right here is the bolt, and it's an Allen bolt that fits in there. And it comes with two different washers. So then the bolt will come in through here with its two washers, right? And tighten down onto the O-ring. So you want to make sure that that O-ring doesn't get pinched in there. You want to make sure the bolt goes in nice and centered with the O-ring. Let me explain without the washer so you can see it a little better. You see the O-ring there? So that's supposed to eek, squeeze in there, through there. So like I said, this one's a little bit thicker, but I got a solution. I'm going to put a coat of oil, thin coat of oil around there to help it bloop, slide in. And a little, thin, a little thin coat of oil right here. Put my washers on, bolt it in. Then your hoses will come here. Now the hoses normally come with this style of clamp right here. And I don't like these clamps one bit. They got the two um, tabs that you squeeze here. And then they press open, right? Well, look at this. Let me see how well I can get this to focus. See where that tab broke off? So that tab broke off and you had nothing else to grab it to. I had to hit that corner with a hammer to get it to come up and have just a little pinch i could grab with the tip of a needle nose and try to get it these are pretty thick they're like double layered you see pretty strong hose because it's a it's a high pressure fluid going through there <sighs> sorry for yawning on y'all so here we're going to get a few of these clamps. These are the kind of clamps you want to replace it with. And I think I'm going to go with these guys right here. They're a little bit bigger than these. But you can get them down to size just right. Just about the same. Tighten down on them. So it'll get two of these clamps. It'll go back on. But now, what I wanted to talk about in the video is this. Uh, if I can get this thing to stand up, I guess I can't. It'll fall in a second, I'm sure. It has got this O-ring on the back, right? And to find that O-ring, forget about it. I mean, I went to every auto parts store in the land. Oh, can't stop yawning, y'all. I went to... Um, 
AutoZone, Advanced, O'Reilly's, even Napa Auto Parts went everywhere. Nobody can get this O-ring. I called Nissan dealership. They want $60 for the O-ring kit, the front and the back. And, and they say you get some washers with it. So you would get this O-ring, this O-ring, and two washers for 60 bucks. For 60 bucks, I mean, you can give me a whole new boat, you know? <laughs> It's crazy, sixty dollars. But um, anyways, you got to think this van is a two thousand four, sixteen years old, and um, they just don't keep these parts around for sixteen year old vans, you know. So what's left? They're not even making them anymore. So what's left is what's left, and it's supply and demand, you know. But you can't get this seal anywhere but eBay. I've seen a few people on eBay post it up. Nobody on Amazon. And uh, on eBay, they wanted like $18 for it. Now, you see I got the gasket maker copper out. And you see how this seal is like flattened out? Well, it was leaking from here. It was actually leaking from both, from the seal on the front on the bolt and from here. And so over time, the bolt works itself loose and could have been tightened up. The seal was tired, though, at the same time. So... Long story short, it needed that seal, it needed the bolt tightened, but then this seal's already been compromised too. It's been flattened out. So, um, long story short, I'm taking it back off. I soak it in, in um, brake cleaner for a little bit, and it gets it to swell up. When I clean it with brake cleaner, I notice it swells up a little bit. And in it, it, you want it to swell up so it thickens up a little bit and now i'm gonna take this uh, gasket maker and put it around it but when you put the gasket maker around you don't want to cake it because when you put it on it's gonna pancake out and you and you don't want it to cake in here and create a blockage of the flow of uh, oil going through there so long story short you want to go thinner there and even all the way around, just keep it thin. You're not trying to slobber this thing up with, with RTV. You're trying to put, you know, a little something to help the seal. Technically, with a new seal, you shouldn't even need RTV at all. But being that we're reusing the seal, we're going to put a little bit of RTV on it. And uh, we can't get that. We can't get that seal. If we could get the seal, we'd be putting a new one on and no RTV. So let me show you in here. That's what you're looking at. That's what it's gonna go into. All right, now the engine block was dirty, 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 like caked all up in the here i mean everywhere caked up like just i'm talking like thick like thick like dig your finger in thick kind of grease so we took a flathead screwdriver worked it all loose and then went through a, a whole box of brake cleaner cleaning the whole bottom of this transmission i mean all this was caked everywhere why because when that leaks, it blows back on everything. And, you know, we just installed some new control arms on this thing. See, they look pretty, don't they? Yes, you are so pretty. And these control arms didn't give me a hard time going in. They went, they went in the way they're supposed to. Everything lined up the way it should. So I was pretty happy with the quality of these control arms and the bushings especially on the driver's side that bushing back there was pretty bad um the bushings in here were bad too i mean all it was just the control arm itself was just bad all the way around so we went ahead and did both control arms we want to keep it clean um you can see i've left this thing leaking like overnight for like two nights waiting on parts. So it's been leaking for a while. And I 
drained the fluid from the transmission from here. This is where you drain it. It's right under the cooler. And I drained it from there overnight and make sure I got a nice slow leak. Zip tied some wires, cleaned everything up on the front and on the back side everywhere. Uh, we had not long ago done another video doing the whole uh, exhaust on this. So all that still looks nice. We had also in another video done the uh, oil cooler for the oil filter seal on the back over there. And we ended up replacing that seal and still putting a little gasket maker on the back of it. But like I said, see, I didn't cake it up. It's a very thin layer. And uh, we went ahead and did the hose for the oil cooler here, brand new with the new better clamps and put a little heat sleeve on that to protect it. Um, so that that's looking nice. And then on the front side over here, we did the same thing. I don't know how well you can see in there. You're probably not going to be able to see in there, but there you go. There's the hose in there with the little heat sleeve on it. And then there's your oil filter. I'm about to take this uh, homemade plastic cover off. It was temporarily put on because this car is missing the the plastic co fender cover for the wheel. And I, I had to replace new struts, a few control arms. So I've been doing some work to this thing. And I was at the junkyard and I noticed another one. So I went to the junkyard, took advantage and grabbed both of the fender covers that go underneath here. Um, so yeah, we'll be replacing these fender covers to get this all covered up in here. And uh, that'll seal actually all the way up to here. And you have to take these screws out and get it sealed properly all the way here. And that'll keep this bumper from being so loose and seal all the way up in there. Um, it's still not the cover for here. And the cover for here was already missing. So I might be leaving this here. I wanted the original cover that would cover this whole hole here but for now this is gonna stay here we'll put the fender cover on and then we'll try to work this back on but um yeah we replaced all these hoses these are your cooler hoses coming from your uh cooler lines going to the condenser to the ac condenser no that's actually transmission cooler no what is that that's a power steering cooler. That's what that is. That's a power steering cooler. Can't beat transmission cooler, guys, because the transmission cooler is up here. That's what I was showing y'all. Going right there. So it's going to take that one long bolt that threads into the hole in there. And uh, you want to make sure all this surface here is dry and clean. And, uh, you know, that's a little too smooth. I think I'm going to take just a little bit of sandpaper and scuff that up just a little bit. Not too bad, but just a little. Just to help that RTV adhere to it a little better. But... Anyways, uh, I don't want to bore you all too much with the video. There's your Nissan Quest. It's a 2004. We're going to be um, putting this cooler back on, putting these fender covers on the wheels on both sides. And uh, hopefully this, this does the job. Now, if it were to leak again, we're going to have to order it on eBay. It'll wait like a week for it to arrive. And do it again but hopefully it swelled up enough the rtv tightening the bolt doing everything right we'll keep an eye on it we'll see if you have the gray stuff you can use the gray gasket maker for this i'm going to go with the copper um it's just a little more heat resistant i'm just putting a little more trust into the copper than i am in the traditional gray 
Um, thin coat, like I said, bolt everything in nice and flush and even and uh, hope for the best. Anyways, I'm going to check out of here so I can get this stuff done and be able to watch a movie in a decent hour and go to bed. God bless y'all. See y'all in the next video. Peace.